My name is Ralph Becker. I teach economics at the School of Social Sciences at the University of Manchester. I want to talk to you in this video about a number of mistakes I have made while creating educational videos. I've been doing this for about six years. From doing these mistakes, I've learned a few things about what you should be doing as well, not only what you shouldn't be doing. So in this clip, I'm going to talk to you about what I have learned, what to do videos on, what your final result should be looking like, what setup to consider, what preparation you should be thinking about and how to tie your videos into the rest of your unit. These tips come from about six years of experience of creating these clips. But while recently reading this book, I realized that I'm not the only ones who makes mistakes and learns more or less the similar lessons out of this. So I recommend this book by Karen Costa. Um, and this is in some sense also a summary of some of the points she makes in, in her clip. So let us start with the issue of what to do videos on. You may be thinking of using online clips to help you in your content delivery. So it turns out you have a number of ways how you can help your students to learn certain content. You may have a textbook, you may have written some lecture notes, there may be online pieces which your students could read and of course there are video clips and truly you can think of other ways. Note that video clips are just one element in that list. They are not here to replace all the others. So as far as content delivery is concerned, you really need to think about of what part of your content delivery is best done with an online clip. For what type of content delivery is it important that your students can hear you, can see you talk, or perhaps can see you develop some working on a whiteboard type environment? If in your online clip you're merely reading what students could read themselves in some document, you will not create engaging content. Just ask your students to read. But of course, there's more to university courses than just content delivery. Part of our job is to engage and motivate students, to try and infuse them about the topic you are teaching them and to demonstrate to them of why they should be learning what you teach them. Some of this is conceivably be better achieved by you than by some reading by you as a person, a person students connect to. So online clips could actually have a very important role in contributing to this process of your students being able to connect to you as a person, as their teacher. A great type of clip that could help in that context is a clip which you create as a welcome to, the, to your unit at the beginning of your course. You talk to your students about what you want to achieve what the main learning objectives are, what the assessments are. You could have a walkthrough for your online web page. You could talk about what you expect of your students and what your students can expect of you. This would be a really, really useful clip to have at the beginning of your course unit. I'm also thinking of creating weekly little clips, a very short, introducing students to what type of content and what type of activity I expect them to learn about and to do in that week. I expect to create them only very shortly before I need them as I also want to be able to react to perhaps any news that may be relevant to my course unit. Before you start producing your clip, you need to think about what you want to achieve with your clip and therefore how the final result of your recording process should look like. You could have perhaps just a headshot clip like this one, where you concentrate on yourself and what you say. A second type could be a clip where you go through lecture slides and you narrate and supplement the information on the lecture slide, perhaps even add some additional annotations on the lecture slides. Or you have a clip where students see the equivalent of a whiteboard where you develop just some working or some argument on the whiteboard. Of course, you could use combinations of these as well in one clip even. You can go more fancy, use animations or other highly produced clips, but I don't think that is necessary for the vast majority of contexts in uh, at university education. What sort of setup will you need? 
clearly you need some sort of technical equipment to produce different clips and for different clips you may need different things but certainly what you need is a microphone and the microphone is really a critical bit of technology as sound needs to be really really quite good so get yourself a decent microphone and test it i for instance live in a house with a slightly dodgy power lines and i have to disconnect my laptop while i record to avoid a really annoying background sound lighting is another issue either you have some daylight in your face and not only in your back or you get so yourself some extra light to ensure that your face is sufficiently lit i for instance use a um, 20 pound builder's light one more thing regarding your setup in particular for headshot type videos you may be concerned that you may be revealing too much of your home when you record such a clip or you may feel that the background in your home is not prof professional enough don't worry either you just find a bit of blank wall like this one but as long as you're comfortable with it revealing to your students that you live in a normal house like all of us hasn't hurt anyone let me say something about preparation if anyone tells you that recording online clips is a piece of cake and doesn't take any time well they are wrong it does take time especially at the beginning and surely enough there will be frustrations but many of you will develop a significant amount of satisfaction with the results you produce not to mention the appreciation you will receive from your students in fact the longer i've been doing this the more I prepare for clips. For this particular clip, I actually created a script. You may sometimes see my eyes wandering to the screen where I read off. Now that's not perfect. I don't have a teleprompter, but I don't think my students will mind. But I found out that thinking while the camera is rolling is not my strength. So I'll try to do the thinking beforehand and then try to merely record my thoughts. But here's one of my life's mantras. Perfect is the enemy of good. So some imperfections, and I'm sure you would have found many already in this clip, are not the end of the world. Lastly, let me talk about how to tie your clips into your course website. The course website is the main communication tool you have with your students. And you need to make sure that your students understand how and when and why they should be looking at your clips and what they should be learning from them. So the context has to come through the website and not through the clip. I strongly recommend that you produce self-contained clips which as much as possible stand on their own legs. The more self-contained your clips are, the more likely it is that you will be able to reuse them next year the year after, in four years time, and perhaps even in different units. So for that reason, you should certainly be avoiding very elaborate title sequences with course unit names, years, even weeks, because these are likely to change in the near future. So just start your clips with what you want to say. Remember, the context comes through the website. If you follow this advice, you will automatically start thinking about shorter, more modular clips. They will have a longer shelf life and therefore save you time further down the track. They also have another advantage. There's ample evidence that it is very difficult to keep students engaged with very long clips. Different people will tell you different things about time limits you should stick to. I personally try very hard to not produce videos which are longer than 15 minutes. Finally, with respect to time, when you link your video into your course website, do make sure that students can see how long a clip will be. You should also help your students to understand of what they should be doing after the clips. So on the website, you may tell your students what you want them to do afterwards. Is there an online quiz in which they should be answering questions which relate to the content of the clip? Do you want them to read something, some extra material, some follow-up reading? Or perhaps you have a reflection question following the clip 
and you want students to go to the discussion board and leave their thoughts on that reflection question. So do make sure that your clip is well embedded into the context of your course. So I hope that through this video, I have perhaps given you a few important pointers on your journey of creating educational clips. Hopefully you can avoid some of the mistakes I made and that cost me a lot of time. Importantly, do look what other people do and learn from that what you think works and what doesn't work. In the end, you will have to experiment and you will ha have to find out what works for you in the context of your course units. Enjoy.